guys and welcome back to the honey set. My mom and I snuck up to the beekeepers apothecary and we were looking at all of our jars and figuring out what could we do up here. My mom had a really good idea to do something that we've kind of been holding on to. Really? So what are we doing? We are going to talk about what we have collected all this propolis for um, while we've been uh, cleaning up frames and harvesting honey. I, we were side catching all the propolis so now we're going to show you what we're going to do with it and this is one thing that i think if any beekeeper could save mm -hmm. it would be propolis now a while ago i was asked if there was one specific thing that i would have in my apothecary have at our apothecary mm -hmm. i don't know what her one specific thing is but for me the one specific thing that i would have is propolis and mm -hmm. the reason is is because it is full of of antimicrobial, antifungal, antiviral. It has so many properties in it. And you gotta think about what the bees are actually doing. Now, propolis, if you are new to beekeeping and if you are new to herbalism, mm -hmm. propolis is actually a byproduct that the bees create. And what they're doing is the bees are going out and they're foraging among hundreds of, of different trees and they're collecting the tree sap they're collecting that resin mm -hmm. they're bringing it back to their colony and they use propolis to keep their entire colony healthy and so when you're a beekeeper and you're doing hive inspections it's worth saving definitely worth saving just like the bees use the propolis to guard their colony we're going to use the propolis not quite the same way as the bees do but that same concept and we're going to use it to protect protect our throat, especially mm -hmm. our throat now you can take propolis orally you can i've used it on my skin mm -hmm. uh, for cuts or or anything that could potentially become infected the alcohol proof that we're going to be using on this one is actually going to be 190 proof which is a 95 percent alcohol right. uh, so with that Here's the thing. I recognize that there's not everybody that can get that high of alcohol uh, right. to to be able to to, to be able to make this tincture. Um, that really that would it's even kind of challenging for us to be able to get that. Now this one I used a hundred proof, uh, which is a fifty percent alcohol. Right. right. So not bad. It still works. It's not as strong when you if you yeah, taste it, it doesn't, directly. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah. So, not bad. If you gotta do what you gotta do, you gotta do what you gotta do. And that's mm -hmm. kind of the way that I've accepted it and what, you know, what I've come to terms with. Well, you're still extracting Correct. some wonderful properties and from the And the pot main pots. thing that we're focusing on is shelf life stable. That's, mm -hmm. that's what we're focusing so on. At least 50% right. alcohol. So, Great if you have it, if you have a higher alcohol, use it. If not, use it. Use what you got. You Call know? wild crafting. It is, it is it really wild is. crafting. So with this one, we're gonna do We're gonna a, be a little more precise. A little more precise. So I'm shooting for one ounce. By weight. By weight of, of propolis which is what I got. I got one ounce. And so... Let's put that in the jar. Yeah. Okay, so I've got my one ounce. And then we gotta turn that around again so we can see, and then we'll pour from here into there and get five ounces. Yes. Okay. So now we need... Five ounces. So that is five ounces of my 95%. Good thing is it completely covers it, uh, which is what we are what we're looking for. I probably should have used a smaller jar. Well, <laughs> if we I, actually have enough menstruum that you could probably double that. So go ahead and let's, let's measure. Let's just see. Go ahead and let's just see if we can get five more ounces because then I'll add one more ounce two of this. Yeah, we can. Oh. So, then, perfect. Okay. 
I measured a little heavy anyway, so I think we're okay. It's fine. It's, it's totally fine. It's going to be it's fine. fine. It's all fine. <laughs> but now we need one more ounce. All right, so we've got to get one more ounce. Oh, that was a chunk. One ounce. Okay. Look at that. Doesn't even look like we put a no. dent in it. Okay. So now, what we're going to do is we are going to label this. It's already starting to pull that beautiful color. What's cool about Propolis is I've noticed, depending on where you're at, you'll see all different shades of Propolis. I've seen really, really dark Propolis. We tend to have extremely lighter, gold-rich Propolis. And that's really dependent upon the trees and their surroundings. So. The next very most important thing that you should do when you're making a tincture is label. Uh, what we do then is because this is probably one of the most asked questions is, okay, now what? So we let it sit. Um, we let it sit for minimum of, I really it's minimum like six to eight weeks ish four weeks acceptable but you're going to want to shake it every single day you're going to want to mix it up this one we've kind of been you know adding to along the way you can see how beautiful and rich it is not bad still keeping this this is definitely my my go-to now um perfect when you label the tincture that you made you're going to put your date you're going to put your ratio which we're using a one part propolis to five parts of your menstruum and then exactly what it is and what you what what percent alcohol that you used and you're going to store it in a cool dark area don't leave it out necessarily in the sun we mm -hmm. have a whole cabinet underneath here which is where we keep everything it tends to be very cool in here but if you have a basement or if you have a pantry you can absolutely put Just that in there dark, yeah. um when you're done with it so this oh. is this is the part. This is what we Don't kind of need it. to do. The goal that we're trying to achieve is, this is our older one, but see how it starts to break down all of the chunks, all of the resinous chunks. So for the next step, which we're gonna show you because honestly, we need to do this anyways. Uh, but- Right here. Right. <laughs> so, so what you're gonna need for this part is an amber colored bottle. Now you can purchase these bottles online, we save some mm -hmm. kombucha bottles that we purchase from the store. Uh, Aldi sells little kombuchas for like $1.99. So we'll save some of those kombucha bottles for fire cider or whatever if right. we want to take it and go. Very good little important fact. Mm -hmm. But the, the amber color bottle has a very uh, important role in your tinctures. And it's because the sunlight will break down the medicinal properties. So that's why the amber bottles are very beneficial. It just keeps it stable and keeps it at the highest quality that you, you know, that you've got for all the work and effort that you've done. Agreed. The other thing that you'll use is a stainless steel funnel that fits in your bottle. We have probably it's like eight different sizes because <laughs> one ounce obviously that's not going to fit um yeah. all the way up to this is a the 16 ounce <laughs> right this is a 16 ounce then a a stainless steel mesh strainer stainless steel it's just easier to clean. it's easier to clean yeah. and you get you get your bang for your buck right um the other thing that we'll often use are the unbleached uh, coffee filters mm -hmm. and or uh, unbleached cheesecloth. We're just going to use the cheesecloth because it's it's easy. And so what we're going to do? Sometimes it's hard to get I it know. started. So our hands are very clean. Sometimes you can wear gloves with this. This is strictly for us. So you're going to hold it. No, I think I think I'll do. And I will say too, from experience. That. That works. Do it over a tray, a lipped tray. Don't, like a, <laughs> don't ask why. <laughs> You'll find out why. Let me we'll just, just continue <laughs> to clean up my mess over here. So, yes, a tray that has a lip is very helpful. All right, let's pour this bad boy. Look at that. Now, you guys have heard me talk about pressing it out. Um, straining it out, 
we do have a, a press that mm -hmm. we'll use when we're doing like big bulk, you know, because we want to get all of that goodness uh, out of it. Yeah. Mm. And so we just let it sit and now it's dripping. Um, and again, it's about up here, guys. The other important thing to do is to label what yes. you... What's in that wonderful amber bottle. Put in it, because I'm going to tell you. We can pick out fire cider very easily. Oh, <laughs> yes. In dried form, and dry yes. form. But what happens is, you know, if you're anything like us, you get started on a project, and then you you got to go over there and do that project, and by the time that you come back, you're like... Oh, what was this? You yeah. know, so or when did we do that? Always, always, always label it, put it out there. You'll thank yourself later. Now, this is going to set for a little bit uh, while it's doing its last minute drip. So, this is a little one ounce bottle. Um, this is kind of my little to go. I take it with me, put it in my purse. We have a little first aid kit that I also have some in. Shake it up. Okay, you want, you want all of the properties. Now you can't really see through it, but you wanna be able to mix it up because what happens is the sediment tends to, to go down to the bottom. If you wanna get the proper dose, go ahead and shake up all of your tinctures. Now, you can do this. My little dropper full. Those are the drops. You can do this up to five times a day if you're using it in your for your throat. I have seen some people put it in a little spray bottle um, mm -hmm. to be able to spray the back of their throat. Their tonsils, yeah, especially. Yeah, the tonsils. Um, you know, just if you've got something going on, again, what do the bees use propolis for? That's that same mindset of what we're using it for. We've even heard uh, propolis uh, used as a reference as a, a liquid resinous band-aid. Yep. Uh, so, you know, it's going to coat it's going to... It's putting the shield up. Yes. It's it's putting that barrier up. And what better way to any type of germ mm -hmm. that can enter through and you can put a barrier up. Heck yeah. Do it. So now uh, I've seen about, you can do about five drops, which would, you know, one, two, three, four, five, two, uh, like two mLs roughly. Mm-hmm. Got it. What a half, no, quarter of a teaspoon. Or quarter of a teaspoon. And when I'm using propolis, it's a, I gotta get this in me now, so I'm going for it. You can uh, also do it here. You could do it on, on your hand. I let it sit back at the back of my throat. That's what I want. But it's, it's a, every, like a Smell thousand different to me, trees. Tastes, I, I still It's see, very floral. Yeah, I have a very strong floral note, unless that's your cottonwoods. Yeah, well, we do. We have a lot of cottonwood. But I immediately feel like a film. Well, that's that liquid band-aid. You no, know, it's that liquid band-aid. And so I'm using it for my throat. I'm using it to just give myself that extra shield whether you're a beekeeper or not, you can actually purchase already propolis tinctures. Yeah. Uh, they have it. It's out there. But if you're a beekeeper, if you know a beekeeper, this is my number one go-to. Mm -hmm. and, and I think more people should learn about it. More people should do research. I remember I wrote an article, and it, it was basically talking about how the scientists can't truly... They've only been able to come up with uh, three, up to 300 different tree species of resin in, in one colony, one colony. And that's based on that where location, that colony right? is. So they haven't even been able to truly understand all the properties. Um, now we use, we've got cottonwood here. We pine, have pine. Cedar. I mean, there are so many. Uh, so many different trees create so many different resins and, and the bees are, they're using it. They're using it for themselves and why not take what would be considered waste and turn it into something that, that you can use. And mm -hmm. yeah, that is beneficial. So, 
I hope that if you guys are at the Homesteaders of America conference this year, which is coming up very soon, I hope that you guys come see us. We're going to be there. I will have our jar of propolis. That was so much fun. I was very excited to see all the people. Yes. Yeah that started uh, collecting their propolis and mm -hmm. making tinctures. So um, if that is one thing good that we are doing, I am, I think we're, that's. That's right. That's, that's what, that's what it's do. all about. We share our knowledge and our experiences and, and you know, hope it puts, put it out there and hope it can do good for you too. Yep. Definitely do your own research. Mm -hmm. Always, always, always. Um, this is just what we've learned and our from our research. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye. Bye, guys.